Hey, what's up guys? My name's ETM1 Ames. I'm making this channel and these videos for all of you that may potentially want to become Navy nukes. Um, I am an ETM1, which is an E6. I'm a, a nuclear electronics technician. The focus of this video is really just going to explain to you what a nuke is and what they do for the Navy. Uh, so that maybe you can make an informed decision whenever you're going through the recruiting process. Follow on videos. Um, I'm going to explain more of like the benefits of becoming a nuke. Um, we're going to talk about like the steps um, and we're going to talk about like the pipeline, the training pipeline. If you guys really want, I can make a video on like what to expect in boot camp. Um, and maybe, you know, we'll talk about the different benefits and then we'll talk about, you know, the progressive advancement portions of it. Uh, and kind of like really all of the stuff that goes into it. Obviously, there's nothing that's going to be classified, right? So like there's only so much I can go into detail for certain things. But a lot of this content will at least help you make an informed decision. And this is really based on uh, some of the guys that we keep receiving to our command. Uh, and, and that you'll learn later on watching more videos. I was a JSI, so it's a junior staff instructor down at Prototype. And uh, I've, I've worked with a lot of people going through the pipeline, a lot of people who've come from different walks of life. And it really seems like... Most people who join the Navy as a nuke are very uninformed as to what the job actually is, and to include myself. Um, so right now, I've been in the Navy almost seven years. Um, I'm on my sea tour right now, so my content may be, you know, depending on, it really just depends on what you guys want to know. Uh, you put it in the comments. I'll make another video for you guys. I'm really just doing this to help you guys out, to make sure that you guys are informed. You pick the right job that you want to do in the Navy, because there's a lot of opportunities across the Navy and, and other branches as well, right? And I just want you to make sure that you're informed. All right, so first, when we're asked, like, what a nuke is, okay? And when you're going to the recruiting's office, uh, the first first ground rule that you need to know, your recruiter is receiving a bonus for making you sign as a nuke, okay? So he's going to hype it up. And you will not, it's, well, I say not. It's very rare that your recruiter will be a nuke themselves, Okay, so that means that you probably have someone who's recruiting you that has no idea what a nuke is. Okay, they're going to hand you a little pamphlet. They're going to say, hey, yeah, check this out. This is going to be great for you. And you're going to be like, oh, that sounds really awesome. Um, but you won't really get any details. You won't know what to expect, right? Um, there's a lot of things that you're going to have questions on, whether you're like, you know, coming into the Navy married, as I did. I was married and I had one kid, right? Um, and some people come in single. So your walks of life are going to be different and your, your benefits and the way that the Navy is going to treat you through the pipeline is going to be different too. So all that's extremely important to know, right? So, all right, ground rule number one, your recruiter is making money getting you to sign as a nuke. It's very hard to get nukes. Um, and because of that, right, they want you to sign as a nuke. If you get a high ASVAB score, that's the first thing they're going to ask you. Oh, you should be a Navy nuke. Um, when they're talking to you, the type of nuke that you're going to become it is not known. You're not going to know until boot camp. Okay. And there, some people will tell you all of these, you know, goofy things that are like, oh yeah, you know, like, uh, you know, you get to choose which rate you want. That's true to an extent. Okay. Um, when you go to boot camp, you'll, you'll talk to a chief, which is an E7. Um, uh, that's a nuke billet as well. Those people will be nukes. They're going to have very limited time with you. So they're not going to get a lot of time to explain to you what the job is. Okay, so it's extremely important that you understand and, and that you're informed when making your decision, right? Okay, there are three types of nukes, all right? Three major types, all right? I am an ETN, which means I'm an electronics technician, okay? We are the electronic side of the reactor, right? My job uh, is, is twofold, really, right? So I do reactor operations which means I physically am the one that controls the reactor, okay? And I also do all of the instrumentation and control maintenance. Um, right now I'm on a Virginia class, submarine, which means that mine's more on the high-tech side. I plug in a computer. I do a lot of maintenance, that type of stuff. I do inspections and things like that and make sure all the equipment's clean um, and things like that. More so to make sure that, you know, reactor safety is ensured from all the, the instrumentation and control side, okay? There are two other major types. So you have electric electrician's mates, which depending on which class of submarine, they'll do more or less work. It really changes 
Uh, but what they're responsible for is the power distribution side of the boat, okay? That, that is also extremely important, right? The boat runs on power. When the reactor makes a bunch of heat and that hot water makes a bunch, a bunch of steam, right? It turns turbines. Well, those turbines have to be maintained and they have to be controlled to make sure you have the right voltage and frequency put out for whatever you have, right? Um, and that, that's the electrician side, okay? They're going to be, depending, if you get sent to an older class of submarine, they, they have a lot more work because they're going to have a lot of different older machinery that requires a lot of breakdown and cleaning and replacement of parts and things like that. So they're, they're more on the electrician side. If you're, you know, if you're wanting to do six years and eventually get out, there's a lot of transferable things on that side that could benefit you towards like the electrician walk of life. You want to try and work on your journeyman's license. That may be beneficial for you. And the last type is machinist mates. Now, there are different flavors of machinist mates. Um, we'll talk about that here in a second. But a machinist mate is someone who's going to really work with the the fluid side of things, right? The fluid or the steam side of things. They're, they're controlling all the piping and the valves uh, and the maintenance that goes along with that. And that, that can be a pretty hefty job, honestly. Uh, you're not going to find a nuke that doesn't work hard. All of us work hard, okay? Um, so you're not... By picking your rate, you're not going to be like, oh, I'm going to get a chill job over here. It's just a different type of hard. That's all it is. Um, I end up working, you know, a lot of hours. Uh, but so do the mechanics, right? So it just depends on what you really what you really favor, right? Um, you know, if you like doing more hands-on type things uh, and you like working with your hands and getting like down and like, you know, down and dirty and like cleaning things and like working on things and physically repairing things uh, like piping and valves and breaking that kind of stuff down. You're like working with, you know, different types of controls and maybe you want to get into quality assurance later on in life. You can do quality assurance calls and all rates, but really mechanics get really good at it. Um, and, and that would, that would be a great option for you. You know, if you're wanting to do, like I said, on the high voltage side of things, or if you want to do maybe, you know, transition to like a journeyman's license or like, actually become an electrician one day, or if you just want a career in the Navy, right? Electricians may, may be a good option, okay? Now, the other flavor of mechanic is an ELT. Um, an ELT is, they originally qualify as mechanics, and they go to what's called ELT school, which is a school that's after the end of the pipeline, and what they will do is they, they're they responsible for the chemistry aspect, right? Um, you can't, it, it's similar to like a, you know, an engine, right? You don't just put water from your garden hose in your coolant system on your engine, right? Because it will corrode and destroy your engine coolant channels, right? Same thing with the reactor and same thing with the secondary side of the plant. There's a bunch of chemistry controls that go into it to make sure that there's not going to be any corrosion, uh, make sure we have all the right, uh, the right, you know, like the thermodynamic properties of, of the fluids and everything that we want. Um, and, and it's a pretty extensive job too, right? Um, and so that, that's an option. And that is chosen later on down the pipeline. So you're, you'll you go through your pick your rate. You'll go to A school, you know, learn the basics of your rate. And then you'll go to power school, learn like the basics of nuclear power. You don't really like learn that much about your job yet. And then you'll go to prototype and that's where people are like, oh, this is really what my job is. That kind of, hmm, that's not what I thought it was, you know, and that's why I'm trying to give this information now to you guys. Okay. Um, I will explain a lot of this stuff more in depth in other videos. I don't want to make these crazy long, uh, but understand that when you're picking your rate and when you're looking at becoming a nuke, there's some huge advantages that a lot of other people don't get. Okay. Uh, we get paid more than a lot of other people in the Navy. We get nuke pay, okay, um, which is because we're qualified nuclear operators. Now, you're going to hear a lot of nukes joke about this, but uh, you, it, you earn it, okay? It's not like it's, not like it's just handed to you. Um, after you become a qualified operator, right, you're going to be taking monthly exams um, based on you're constantly training, right, uh, and you're constantly learning and studying, so that you can always be better, right? Um, and you're constantly being examined on that knowledge to make sure you learn the, from the training topics before. And that's really how you maintain your nuclear pay. 
right? That starts off at about 150 bucks a month extra. Um, and then that ramps up, right? It goes up to 300 as of right now, at the time of this video, um, it goes up to $375 a month if you qualify and get your supervisor in EC. And that's a scaled system as well. So as you make higher ranks, like E7, it changes because now they have a chief pay. Uh, if you qualify engineering watch supervisor, which I'll talk about quals and like best practices later on. Okay. Um, I think, you know, I might be a really helpful resource because I got promoted really, really fast. So I, I made rank in the pipeline, which is not very common. Um, and I made, I made first class really fast. I'm chief eligible now, not even at my seven year mark. Uh, hopefully, you know, maybe, maybe I can make chief this cycle or the next cycle. We'll see. I don't know what happens, you know, but I, I can help you guys kind of understand what's up. The videos I saw on YouTube were uh, a person who failed out of the pipeline and then someone else who was going through it had limited experience. So I just wanted to give you guys the full perspective. Okay. So when you're choosing your rate, all right, there's things you need to understand. Okay. Electricians, it is very hard to make rank. Okay. Electricians stay in the Navy a very long time, and so it saturates the field, okay? So what that means is you, in order to make second class or E5, you are probably going to have to start a re-enlist, okay? It's, I don't know of anyone who's made it off the exam because there are so many of them in the field, okay? What that means is, like, star re-enlist, I'll explain that more in later videos, but it, long story short, it just means that, like, you're going to have to add more time in the Navy and get spot promoted from that contract um, in order to make rank. Okay. That kind of sucks. And it doesn't just stop there. It's also very difficult to make first class. Okay. Which is E6, the next rank. Um, and then there again, right? The field is extremely saturated. So there's a whole bunch of chiefs. So E7. So it's very difficult to make E7. So there's not a lot of open billets for that option. Right. Um, and then, you know, senior chief and master chief are even more limited for electricians. Now, for an ET like myself, uh, it is harder to make second class, um, but it can be done. I did it in the pipeline, like not even qualified my own rate yet. Um, but, you know, say you start re enlist just like the other rates. I made first class really, really fast, and I was not even a... Uh, E5, I, I was barely at two years as an E5 when I made first class. Um, and that's very possible as an ET because there's not a lot of us. A lot of people get out. Um, the job is kind of rough, not going to lie. Uh, but there's a lot of really good benefits if you want to stick around and do it. Um, but if you do it, right, your odds of advancement are really good. Um, E6, E6 you're, you're going to make it. Probably your first time ever taking the exam, you're probably going to make E6. Okay, because there's very few of us. Um, E7, it's almost a 100% advancement right now, uh, which means all you have to do is meet the eligibility requirements, which I'll, I'll explain in later videos, each rank, what you have to do. Um, but you, you'll probably make it first time up, okay? A lot of my buddies that made it uh, were first time. And, you know, they were hard workers and did exactly what they are supposed to do. But, yeah, it's which is pretty fast, right? Because some electricians will be at E6s for, you know, you're talking seven, eight years before they make E7, and I won't even be in the Navy that long, and I could potentially make E7. Uh, and that's specifically because of, like, the attrition rate. So, you know, uh, mechanics kind of fall in the middle of that. Um, most mechanics will make first class either the first or second time they take the exam. Now, uh, something I need to explain. This is based on my experience in the submarine fleet. Okay, I'm a submariner, so this is, this is what I do. Um, now the surface fleet is a little bit different, okay? Um, but the numbers are mostly about the same. They usually deviate by like three or 4% when it comes to advancing, advancement rates. Um, and so my perspective is based on subs. Um, that changes things. Well, I can explain that in later videos as well. There, there's a lot of content to explain about the nuke life, uh, the job itself, and, and what is expected of you. So that's why I want to make as many videos as possible to help you guys out. Uh, but yeah, so that's picking your job, right? If you do decide that you're like, okay, you know, I really like the mechanic side of things. I choose to be a mechanic. And then, uh, you know, down the pipeline, you become an ELT, for example. 
and you're like, hey, this seems like a real op real cool option, you'll see that on the pamphlet whenever you get your pamphlet from your recruiter, and he's like, oh, I got the CLT option here. Well, that is going to hamper your advancement, okay? There are not a lot of ELT openings, and it is not easy to make E7 as an ELT. Um, so these are things you need to look at for long-term if you intend to stay in, right? Uh, and it's completely up to you. You know, it, it definitely can be done, and we, you know, obviously need high-quality E7s in all rates. Um, but, you know, it's up to you. It depends on what, what your overall goals are, right? A lot of things can change. Okay, so that's the basic explanation of the rates. Um, the minor differences for that kind of stuff. Some of the things that they're going to talk to you about in recruiting tactics. Um, my recruiter told me that uh, the pipeline is credited by MIT and all this other craziness. I'm, you know, sure, it, it probably might be. I really don't know. But I will tell you that I don't know a single nuke who's gotten a degree from MIT, okay? Because when they say these classes are accredited by different things, it's kind of fluffed, okay? The, the brochure is really to recruit you. Um, you're not going to hardly get any credits for the pipeline unless you go to, like, Thomas Edison, um, which is okay, you know? That's an option. Uh, but just understand that, like, you're not going to get as many credits as you think, all right? Um, some other helpful things when you, so when you sign up, right, right now at the time of this video, it's like January 6, 2023, um, they're giving like a $50,000 bonus to sign up to become, you know, a nuke, which is a lot of money. Um, but that bonus doesn't come to you right away. Okay. So you understand that when you join and you get sent out from, from your depth or delayed entry program and you get shipped out to boot camp, you're going to be an E3. Okay, you're automatic E3 if you're a nuke. Okay. Um, you'll go through the boot camp process getting paid E3 the entire time. Okay, if you're married, you will get E3 BAH with dependents. If you have, you know, uh, if you're, you know, married, you'll get dependent pay. Now, all of this stuff can be looked up if you just literally search. Um, so, if you go online and search military BAH calculator, you can find all that content. Now that is based on the zip code that you were stationed. So if you're in boot camp, right, that's going to be like, I'm pretty sure it's based on the boot camp zip code or it might be based on your home record zip code. I'm not really sure about that one. I'd have to look it up. But after that, it'll be based on the Charleston zip code when you go to original Charleston school. Okay. So that's going to, you'll understand that when you get there. Now, when you get to the pipeline, that bonus still is not given to you. Okay. You're going to do your first portion of training, which is like if you are a uh, ET, electronic technician, or an electrician's mate, it's going to be six months long. You know, pending any possible delays, you may be an in-doc, uh, which is where they kind of give you briefs, explain to you like the new stuff in the Navy, kind of walk you through like these are the Navy values, this is what we expect of you. You know, that may take a month um, or more until they get enough people to consolidate you into a class. So then you'll go through your six months if you're a wire rate, wire rate being electricians or electronics technicians, right? Uh, or three months if you're a mechanic, okay? Then after that, you're going to get a third of your bonus, all right? At the gra after graduation, it should be like a week or two after that, you'll get a third of your bonus, right? It's going to be taxed, okay? So just understand that you're like, you know, if you were to get 30000 for example, you're not going to get ten grand in your pocket, if you're, you know, married and you have dependents, they're going to tax you at the married rate. So you'll get like, what, 7,500 or wherever it is, and then it ends up being after that. Okay. Then you'll go through and you'll complete power school. And then that, that's another six months. There might be like a one to two month holding period in between then where you do like some goofy, dumb jobs around site. And then you'll go to, to prototype. And after the completion of prototype is when you get the remaining two thirds of that bonus. Okay. So don't, don't plan on doing anything crazy with this bonus ahead of time. Understand that's when you're going to get it. That's when you're going to get paid. Now, when you complete a school, which is the first school in the pipeline, six months for wire rates, three months for mechanics that after the completion of that, assuming that you are within the body fat standards and you can pass your, your PRT, which is your physical readiness test, right? You will be spot promoted to E4. Okay, 
Um, and then from that date on, right, you get E4 pay and E4 BAH if you're already married. Uh, up until this point, if you're not married, you're living in the barracks, um, or they call it BEQ housing. But it's pretty much like a, it's pretty much like a miniature apartment is what it is. Like, a, you know, a set of apartments and you'll share a room with somebody and there'll be two separate beds, obviously. And you'll have like, you know, two separate dressers and a TV and then you'll have like a shower and closet and two sinks. Uh, but you're not going to be able to like make food there. You'll have the galley that provides you three meals a day. Um, so there's that, right? But that after A school is when you become an E4. Now, if you don't, you know, if you become a chunky monkey and you don't pass your PCA standards, which your body composition assessment, right? You're, you're not going to get advanced. Okay. You're going to have to get within your standards and then, you know, apply again. Uh, so that, that can significantly delay your process and your all advancement. Okay. Um, so I know that's a lot of information. I know we've talked about a lot of things. Um, I'll add more content later to explain everything. If you guys have con questions and you want me to cover them, like I'll try to do like one video every week or so at least, but I really want to answer you guys' questions so that you have make an informed decision. There is no such thing as a dumb question when you guys are joining the Navy or, or any other branch thereof or there. And like, if you have any questions at all, please put them in the comments. Okay. I will go through and I may be a little slow, right? Cause I, I, I still work a lot. I'm, I'm entering shift work right now and I'm not going to have another day off for like six weeks. Um, but I want to make sure you guys are informed and I want to help you guys out as much as possible. And eventually after we answer all the new questions of becoming a new, I want to turn this channel into something that helps you guys get advanced, helps you guys stay up to date on your stuff, how to maintain your documents, how to maintain your records, uh, how to do everything properly. Okay. Cause that's like the number one thing I deal with right now is just like teaching guys what to do and teaching guys how to, how to be better sailors. And I want to make sure that you guys have the, the best opportunities because we've gained a lot of guys that haven't really had a lot of opportunities like that. And, uh, you know, I spend a lot of time working with them to, to make sure they, they get the information that they need to be able to succeed. Um, and so I just, you know, want to give that opportunity to you guys. Like I said, right, if you like the video, please click the like button. Uh, feel free to subscribe so you'll get notifications whenever I do make more videos answering your comments. Um, instead of going through and, like, responding to each individual comment, what I'll do is I'll make a list. And I'll make another video just covering all the questions in the comments. Because, honestly, if you have a question... I guarantee you there are thousands of people out there who have the same question as you. Okay, so it's really important that you guys put them in the comments so that I can answer them for you, okay? There's a huge uh, community of nukes that have retired that are always willing to help out. You may even see that in the comments, honestly. People may come out there and try and help them out, and, like, it's honestly appreciated, okay? Because it's, it's a different job, and very few people know much information about it, especially not your recruiters, okay? So it's a very rewarding job. Uh, it just, I just want to make sure it's something that you want to do. Okay. Uh, like I said, right. My name is ETM one Ames. Um, and I made this channel for you guys. All right. So this is totally up to you guys. You just put the comments, what you want me to make. Thank you for watching though.